have provided for the inevitable invocation of the act. So I'm going to put the question to you directly. What were the economic impacts of the occupation and were they significant enough to meet the threshold of a threat to national security under Section 2 of the CSIS Act? Um, so I do have to start, again, sincerely, with all due respect, by disputing the contention that when it comes to the economy, reputation doesn't matter. In fact, Canada's reputation as a reliable trading partner, as a reliable investment destination, as a country with peace, order, and good government, as a country with stable and effective political institutions, these are some of the most precious things we have as an economy, and they are the foundation for our prosperity. And I would direct That's not you the question I asked you. The question I asked you is, what economic impacts of the occupation did your ministry provide, and what legal opinion was provided that would have met the threshold as defined under Section 2 of the CSIS Act. I'm not talking about pontification. I'm talking about facts here. Again, uh, I don't believe I'm pontificating. Uh, let me, again, be really, really clear. The economic impact was absolutely clearly there. The economic impact what was to the region of Ottawa was clear. The economic impact of actual trade, which was blocked, and the ongoing future economic impact, the harm done to our reputation as a reliable trading partner and investment destination. It? I had many conversations with Canadian that's, business leaders. That's not good enough. M Madam, Madam Chair, look. But I, I, it's a very frustrating process when we have such limited time and such evasive answers. What we're looking for out of this committee are specifics, facts of the matter. Well, I'm going to go back to the most basic question. If the Minister of Finance can provide something generated within her department that is not an external reference to an American uh, governor or, or any external bodies that quantify the threshold under Section 2 that goes beyond reputation. I'm talking about real economic impacts that are quantifiable, that her ministry, I would hope, would have generated in some kind of report, some kind of briefing, and if so, would she please provide it to this committee today? Thank you. And I have to say, I disagree so forcefully with the premise of the question. Reputational damage when it comes to an economy when it comes to a trading relationship, when it comes to Canada's This is reputation. just repeating the same answer. You know, look, at the end of the day, we have, we have a job at this committee to get to the heart of the matter. You can reject the premise of the question. All you have to say is that your, your ministry did not generate any internal information that would be for the good and the welfare of this committee, because that's what I'm hearing right now in, in the repeating of these answers. So I'm going to move on. It, it states on February 17th that you... Uh, had spoken directly with the heads of major banks and the director of FinTech. What was the nature of those conversations? And did banks and FinTech express either support or opposition to any of the temporary measures in the order? The order was in place. And actually, I'm looking at my timeline. I believe that my conversation with the bank... CEOs was on uh, my... Madam Minister, yes. please. No, no. I just need an answer. Did they provide any opposition to the directions? Yes or no? No, I. but I want to be precise and not to seem to confirm a date which is false. That's fine. So, Fair enough. Do you have... You're, you're referencing notes. Can you share the notes from the conversations that you had with them, with the committee? These are not notes from the conversation. This is a personal timeline of conversations. Did, did you have did you have notes from the meetings with the heads of banks and FinTrack? Yes or no? Uh, let me say something that I think uh, is appropriate for me to share concerning the meetings that I had with the CEOs of the major banks, and that is two things. First of all. Before the invocation of the emergency measures, I spoke to Canadian business leaders, including some bank CEOs, 
I, they I've already were confirmed that. I just want to know about do you the have Canadian notes? economy. Do you when have notes? Comes, yes or no? When it comes to the conversations I had with the bank CEOs after the invocation of the emergency measures, at that point, their job was to act in Ma accordance Madam Chair, with listen, the law we have Everybody watching this committee right now can see that you're just refusing to answer a very basic question. It's, it's to the point of almost being contemptible, quite frankly. I'm asking you a basic question. Do you have notes pertaining to those high-level meetings, yes or no? I'm not asking for the content now. I'm not sure it's very appropriate to call a fellow MP contemptible. I said it's uh, I almost have... to the point of contemptible. That's my observation. Just a reminder that when you both talk at once, it's difficult. So uh, keeping in mind the time, Minister, would you please respond? Yeah, I, I think that I have spoken about the content of those conversations. It was entirely appropriate for me and my deputy minister to have both individual conversations and group meetings with the CEOs this of is. the main banks. They spoke to us about... Do you have notes? Do you have notes? I'm speaking to you now about the content of those conversations. I'm asking you if you took notes. Is that, that is, that is that? unreal. Ma Madam Speaker, just, you know. Point. Mr. Green, did you want to go ahead? Um, I, I did not uh, hear. No, the, no at, at this point, uh, uh, you know what? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I just anticipate we're going to have to call the witness back and, and, and keep, keep having to, to have an opportunity to actually get some answers. We're now 42 minutes, we're, we're over an hour into this, and I don't think we've gotten any answers, so.